Hey, talking your life's math and history, and we are going to do a video on produce and consume. So in this video, we're going to look at a word problem and see how two countries can produce things and consume things and train them at the same time. So here's the problem. Suppose that a worker in Agland can produce either 10 units of organic grain or 2 units of incense per year. And a worker from Zemland can produce either 5 units of organic grain or 15 units of incense per year. So there are two countries. The countries are Agland and we also have Zemland. So, about the two countries, if Agland has 10, if there are 20 workers in Agland and 10 workers in Zemland, currently the two countries do not trade. So, that is the first thing we gotta think about. What do they both specialize if they do not trade? For Agland, we already said that they're going to produce 10 units of organic grain or 2 units of incense. But for Zemland, they're going to produce 5 units of grain or we're going to have 15 units of incense. But the thing about this problem which makes it different is not only you're trying to find out what country makes what, but the number of workers is going to change everything. Because it literally says on the problem, suppose a worker, and it also says that there are 20 workers in Agland, and also there are 10 workers in Zenland. So, if this is true for only one worker for each country, then we're going to have to multiply them by how many workers there are, the number of workers. So, the more workers you have, the better thing you can do to produce the items and the resources you need, the faster and more efficient you can produce. So there's teamwork! To first. Flower is in second. Snowball is tied with pen for the lead. Yeah, go snowball. Time is almost up. Five, four, three, two, one. Boop. Time's up. Well, Spongy is actually in first. So in reality, Aglin is going to have a different equation. They're gonna have two hundred grains, organic grains or they are going to have 40 incense because the number of workers is going to be multiplied to the normal original equation. So now we write that again on the bottom. But with Zenland, it's a little bit different. That is for one worker, but they have 10 workers instead. So if you calculate that, you're going to get 50 of the grain, organic grain, or you're going to have 700 and, wait, no, 150. Ah, incense. So now we have to do the math part. We're going to find out what happens if we get G alone? And on here, we're going to see what happens if we get I alone. We're going to put G here and I. So 200 divided by 200 is G. And 40 divided by 200 is 0.8I. So one organic grain is equal to 0.I 0.8 incense. For Zenlin, it's a little bit different. 50 and 50. 
So one gram organic grain is going to be equal to three I. So then we're going to do the bottom. So we're going to say 40 and 40. 200 divided by 40 is going to be 5. And 40 divided by 40 is I. So 1I is going to equal 5 grain. That was for Aglin, but for Zemlin, it's a little bit different. We're going to have divided by 150. Divide by 150. So I is going to equal 1 over 3 G grain. So according to what we found to find the comparative advantage, we can conclude and explain that Aglin has the comparative advantage for making grain because that nation has a much cheaper price to make the same item. It's more efficient there. And for Zenlin, they're going to make incense because five and one third is going to be this one. More cheaper price to make it in Zenlin. So if both countries are specializing in what they like to do and what they're really good at at the comparative advantage, what they're saying is that we're going to say that Aglin is going to produce 200 grains. And Zenlin is going to produce 150 incense. Now we get to part two into the consuming part. So we understood that the countries do not trade. However, Aglin produces and consumes 100 units of grain and 20 units of incense per year. Zenlin produces and consumes 50 units of grain and no incense per year. If each country made the decision to specialize in the production of the good that they're really good at, at a comparative advantage, then the combined yearly output of the two nations will cause an increase in so we already know that these two countries are going to specialize into something that they're really good at or at the comparative advantage. But now they want to make a deal. What they want to do is not trade, but to combine their resources together. So now let's take a look at country A or Aglin. It says that Aglin is going to produce and consume 100 units of grain and 20 units of incense per year. So we're going to subtract everything. We're going to do 200 grain and we're also going to do 150 incense. So subtract by 100 and subtract by 20 is going to be for the consumer ing or how much they consume for Aglin. Country A. For country Z, it's going to be a little bit different. For country Z, we're, uh, we're going to read that Zenlin is going to produce and consume 50 units of grain and no incense per year. So we're going to say that they produce 50... They consume... 50 units of grain, and not only that, they're going to have no consuming, or they consume no incense. So when we subtract everything up, we're going to get to a final answer of 130 incense, and we're also going to have 50 grain. Let's see if we're going to be correct. So if the two countries are counted with each other and they merge their ideas, they are both are going to have an leftover 50 grain and 130 incense. Let's see. Yep, the answer is D. They're going to have an increase in 50 units of grain 
and 130 units of incense. So what we did in the video was find what did they specialize in? What resource did Zenlin and Aglin specialize in? Then we found out how much they consume. Consume means how much you use. So after you use it, it's gone. Like, there's no infinite coal or cookies or water. Once you use it, it's done. It's gone. So that's why they say don't waste things. Because once you use it, it's literally gone. Like electricity, for example. I hope this video has helped you understand what producing and consuming means. Thank you for watching Calpenulize Math Industry. Like and subscribe.